So what happened was I bought this place 20 years ago, and it was uh, a cage facility. It was one of the very few uh, remaining small farms. Now, are you a Colorado native? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I came here from California. Oh, okay. So, uh, actually, I'm a CPA and, and uh, sold my accounting practice. Oh. Yeah. But I do have a bachelor's degree in animal science. Oh. Second degree in accounting. Uh, did the accounting for 20 years and want to get back into agriculture. So, that's what happened. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, just by the time I bought this place in 1990, were basically disappearing. This was one of the, the last ones left. And uh, it had, it's 15,000 square feet, and it had 33,000 chickens in cages. At that time, 20 years ago, there were really absolutely no realizing a couple of things. One, I personally and my family were just not comfortable with it. That, mm -hmm. that was one reason. And the other reason, so that was a personal reason, the commercial or the business reason for it was a small farm like mine was sort of a dinosaur and in order for me to hang on to it, I needed to find a niche market. Right. Thought about lots of other different things, but, you know, this fresh took off uh, over the years and for, I don't know, about 13, 14 years, we were basically the only ones producing cage-free eggs in Colorado, mm -hmm. and then now we have others that, right. are, that, that are in it. And it, that goes to consumer demand, to other people who wanted it, and, you know, right. that kind of thing. So we changed, at, at the time we contacted HSUS, Sid did, and, and they came to the farm and we said, what do you want us to do, you know, cage-free? We don't know, it's not gonna be backyard, it's not gonna be 30 chickens running around commercial cage-free operation what what would it take for what would do we need to do to get your work under your auspices and get your blessing and, right. you know that kind of thing and they themselves mm -hmm. I was the first mm -hmm. to do it in the United States I, right. that had contacted them and so there was it was a lot of trial and error there was this Dutch company by the name of Benkomatic who had a, a little system set up of cage-free. Now the Dutch and the Europeans were about 15, 20 years ahead of us on this cage-free business. They had already done a lot of, you know. Um, oh, interesting. I yeah, know they, okay. you know, they were way ahead. And uh, so I've seen this little, you know, what a nest would look like and how the eggs are collected. And I said, well, that's wonderful, but I, you know, I want to see an actual farm, you know, how's it work? He goes, I've only sold one system in the United <laughs> States, you know. And that wasn't even a cage operation, it was um, a breeder. And it was in um, Spencer, Iowa. So I drove out there to take a look. I see 10, 12,000 new chickens. You unload them from the truck and you turn them in this 15,000 square foot area, no cages. So where? Uh, what if they start laying eggs everywhere and how are you going to go collect it? Mm -hmm. Well, the system was so good that every one of those chickens, without training obviously, for 20 years, about 17 of it has been cage free. You guys think about 20 years ago, there was no Google. Build this thing. How, what kind of equipment you buy? How do, you know, do cage, cage chickens behave differently than cage free? They're feeding. Uh, you know, nutritional requirements, are they different, and so... But uh, what a learning process. It was a learning yeah. process, and that's why it took a while um, from the time I decided I don't want to do this to the time... And then there was the building part, you know, the, we had to tear those, retrofit the farm, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, that was about a six month process to, you know, do all of that, so... That's incredible. Yeah, and so that's kind of the history of it.